There we go. So, uh, the, you know, it starts off normal. Um, some strict rules and these stupid uh, pale blue jumpsuit uniforms that all the students have to wear. They're don't, they don't even wear, like, uh, regular shoes. They're just given what would be referred to as softies. Softies are stuff that uh, people in the scout service would know about softies. Softies are like a that in between between like a slipper and a shoe that a lot of um, expo pilots will wear since they're you know on the ship for so long you know they might as well be comfortable kind of thing. Um, they're just issued softies and these like light blue uh, pajama thin jumpsuits, but. The the training goes from being what you would expect normal, and then it jumps to, you know, her PE class is almost like an advanced combat class, um, learning multiple forms of martial arts, um, encouraged. She, she initially is shocked because the teachers are encouraging students to go for that, that killing blow or to go for the, you know, the breaking blow kind of combat. Um, and then it starts to go into where classmates are disappearing. And, and if they don't disappear, when she sees them again, they don't act the same. And they've had cybernetic implants put in. Um, now, one of the things that the computer data also shows you, um, Kasa Vong, according to the statistics for this school, was... Um, in the low or in the the lower end of the statistics, most of the students that are at the academy seem to be twins, either twins or triplets. At least that's the way they're listed. Um, the other thing that the computer data shows is that some of these students. You see names disappear from the student roster, and names are instead of names, you start seeing numbers. And one number in particular, um, you note that um, 37, according to the notes, um, is considered a failure. Uh, this is the Borg number. Yeah, ki yeah, kind of. Um, you see that thirty-seven has not re has not received um, cybernetic implants. It does show that uh, psionics potential is off the charts, um, and that thirty-seven. Um, but it was deemed that thirty-seven was a failure. And the other thing that you find in the computer research notes is that evidently. Um, general development company has gotten their hands on some ancient artifacts um so for uh for <laughs> 42 is clearly the leader yes um uh the ancients <clears throat> for for your edification especially for for carl um the ancients were a race that could be considered a precursor race um, about 300,000 years ago. Um, and they did things like they went to Earth and they picked up humans and they put humans on Valan and they put humans on Zedant and they fucked with them. And, uh, did they grow any of them? More or less, they, they more or less seeded, the, they more or less seeded this section of charted space with humans. <clears throat> Another thing that they did, <clears throat> they went to Earth and they took canines. And they took them uh, to, um, there's Corey. Um, they took the canines to the Varger Extents and genetically modified them and they became the Varger. Uh, this is actually something that the Varger are very proud of in that they are the, the only species that uh, has been, I think they're kind of like the first species, or like <clears throat> um, they were uplifted, so to speak. <clears throat> they uplifted other animals as well. Um, 
There is some there's some speculation that there are some uplifted versions of dolphins. There are uplifted versions of apes, although the Soleimani have themselves uplifted some apes as well on their own. Um, <clears throat> and these ancients have immense power and ability. Um, like, when I say immense power, like, they could move stars and put them into different configurations whenever they want. Um, and so, and then... They apparently had some kind of civil war and it's assumed killed themselves off uh, to the point where uh, there's very few ruins um, left over. There's, of, of the ruins that have been found, most have been found in like the Tro or not in the Trojan region, in like the Spinward Marches um, area of space. Um, and when relics are found, they're very rarely are they in any kind of uh, functional state. Um, either either not functional or um, humans humanity is just too dumb at this point to be able to figure out how to make them work. Um, but it appears there have been a couple times where some things were found. It is widely believed that. The Droin, uh, who are a kind of a reptilian race, um, some have wings, some don't. There, it is widely believed that the Droin are direct descendants um, of the ancients. They're either direct descendants or they were like a slave caste for the ancients. Um, and some of their equipment matches... Uh, what is rumored that it, it's like a lower tech version of what the ancients were capable of. Obviously, the ancients could do much, much more with it. Um, there are some rumors that there are some items that have been um, found operational and there have been attempts to backward engineer them. Um, one of the rumors flying around is something called a black globe generator. Um, it requires an immense amount of power, which means it's usually only found on capital ships. Uh, and what this thing is proposed to do is it creates a um, field around the ship that uh, protects it from scanning. It also uh, will absorb energy that comes into it. But the energy then has to be dissipated because it'll just keep sucking that energy up to the point where the, the ship will explode. Um, at least that's the human, that's the rumor of the human version uh, of this. Um, Captain Beth would have heard some rumors about this in the, um, in the scout service. <clears throat> so it seems that General Development Company has actually found something. And it looks like 37's failure is tied to whatever it is that they found. Um, and that's basically what you have discovered at this point. Um, it doesn't, nothing in the computer logs um, really state much other than that Kassa, uh ran away. They, the computer logs actually listed as escaped. Um, her diary... The last entry is that <clears throat> she is going to um, stow away on a trade ship and attempt to escape uh, the planet Blue, uh, which you already know happened and that it was hit by pirates. Uh, so that's the information that was on the diaries and the computer logs. There's no real... <clears throat> There's no real description of what this, whatever it is that, that Jadeko found that they're trying to analyze or that they need psionics for. Um, it, it just is clear that, that they're working on something that was found. And it looks like, from the computer logs, it looks like it was from ancient origin. All right. And we have no idea what trade ship she might have thrown away on, right? Uh, <laughs> you know that. We just don't know what 
Yeah, yeah you don't know which pirate. Yeah, you don't know which pirates got her or what they did with her. Um the one thing that you did find or that uh Bjorn found out, Bjorn and Athaku found out that um there was a Aslan link to the pirates. And <clears throat> at the time that led Bjorn and Athaku to Katora where they met you guys. Um, but that ended up being a dead end because it was the wrong, the assumption is it was the wrong Aslan. So there's another group of Aslan. The, the Aslan on Katora are from the Aslan Harry. There is a group that broke off and have created their own um, polity called the Glorious Empire uh, that are well known for slavers. They're kind of, um, I don't know, you could kind of count them as like the North Korea of this area. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay. A lot of bluster, not a whole lot of punch, but their main... The yeah, they've got a lot of slaves. They, their main export is mercenaries. Um, you guys have already uh, had to deal with uh, Glorious Empire mercenaries when you were on a Arunasir. Okay. So who is a pirate ship that we don't know anything about? Maybe Steve would be a good place to check it out. That's right. Yeah, that was an idea. Was to ask around Steve. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Was to and it's not I mean it's not close, but it's not Yeah, and you you know you know where the the deep space refueling station is, so you could jump from Noricum to Thieve. So, like, right in here is a deep space refueling station uh, well, that the is pirates it, have. Is it, is it our station at Borite? It is, and you refueled from there, but you wouldn't, your your ship only has a two parsec jump uh, range, mm -hmm. so you would have to go, you would have to at least jump to Noricum and then jump to the deep space refueling station in order to make the jump to Thieve. You just couldn't do it from Borite. Right. Well, I was just thinking if we went, like, blue to, to, I don't know, Torkoal, Torkoal to Borite, Borite to Noricum, Noricum to Thieve. Right. And so you're leaving from Borite already. So, yeah, you could just go to Noricum and make on, the jump. I'm sorry. So that wasn't here last week. I thought we were on blue still. So. No, no. But, yeah, they, they left blue. Um, nice. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, you could jump to Thieve. I mean, as long as you continue to feed power to the uh, I was going to say the frost unit. If you continue to feed power to the uh, low birds for the Alua, um, they'll keep indefinitely. Are there any like lackeys that want to come aboard? They want to come with us and see Thieves and check it out? So, oddly enough, Dun, dun, Is Timmy, Timmy Monaco? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Uh, Teddy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Teddy. Actually. Mm -hmm. So, one of your lackeys. <clears throat> that's not very nice. Fellow pirates. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see here. It is. Where did it go? I'm sorry, it wasn't on Aronis here that you ran into the mercenaries. It was on uh, Acrid. They were hired to be strike breakers. That's right. Well, that's highly odd. That's where we started uh, making really strong relationships with corporate <laughs> yes. The corporation of the world. Yeah, and you ended up leaving Acrid in the hands of, um, well, Acrid and Arenas here, really, in uh, the hands of the new union. Uh, 
So one of your lackeys tells you that, um, oh, that's really weird. Uh, that uh, there is some business to be done on um, on thief um, could could net you a pretty penny if you would be interested. Well, are there are there known hangouts for the glorious empire that wouldn't be thieves? Like I mean, like the. That wouldn't be dangerous. Specifically the, 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 em the Empire doesn't really hang out at Thieve, but you might be able to, uh, at Thieve at least, you could put your ear to the ground uh, and talk amongst the pirates to find out, you know, exactly what may be going on. Uh, right, and where would be a glorious Empire hangout? Uh, Down in the gray, like. Yeah, so this this gray section is Glorious Empire's is the edge of Glorious Empire space. Um, yeah, that that's kind of where they do their thing. Um, uh -huh. But they send out they send out raiding parties to capture slaves all the time. So. Yeah, I think we should avoid. Going to the Glorious Empire. Well, we don't know what I'm up there. Want to get more info about um, where this person may possibly be. So, one of your pirates tells you that um, <clears throat> he says, you know, if you're going to thieve, um, there is some business to be done. Um, he has heard, and I can't, I can't believe I can't find this. Okay. I am shocked that I can't find this. Am I missing something here? Am I going blind? Maybe it's not in this book. Hmm. Although it should be. It's displaying. Anyways, I already know what it is. So, um,. <clears throat> There are there is a clan of Ogman raiders on Ogma. You know, those are the guys that occasionally like to eat people. Some 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 of the clans are are cannibalistic, others are not. Um <laughs> Yes, yes, there's no Moss Eisley Cantina. Well, well, just wait until you get to the So uh, there are these Ogman Raiders. Um, there are some clans that are have been known to be cannibalistic. Um, there are others not so much. Um, a clan that is uh, not so much uh, a cannibal um, has requested a um, an escort or requested a ship and brokers to take them to thieve. To purchase weapons and technology. Now, the thing about Thieve, right. this is like, Thieve is like the, <laughs> the traveler's dream planet. You guys are going to wet yourselves going here. It has an extremely low law level and an extremely high tech level. Everything's for sale. And it like... Tech level 15, maybe some 16 stuff. Um, so that's a possibility. Nice. It should so be a pirate's wet to, dream. Do we need to go to Agma? So, yeah, he said he he gives you these landing coordinates, um, tells you that you can go to Agma, you can meet with the with the clan chieftain. Um, at these coordinates, and um, he can give you the details, but essentially what it is is that he wants to send some raiders uh, to purchase weapons and technology on Thieve, um, and they can purchase ship to come back, but what they really need, because nobody on Thieve is going to deal with Augment Raiders. They're just, they think they're a joke. And so uh, these are, the, Thieve is like the really real pirates. Um so uh, basically, they'll charter a ship to take them back to Agma with their with what they purchase. 
but they would need you guys to take them um take them there to uh kind of broker the deal with with these guys with the the people on thieve in order to purchase these weapons and tech How much does he get paid? He says you'll have to negotiate that with the chieftain of the clan, but um, the last time that he heard, he said it was probably around 500,000 credits. And it's only one other jump out of your way, because, I mean, if you went from Borite, jump to Ogma, and then you would just jump to Noricum and you'd be on your way to Thieve. What do you think her sister should get for extra, extra cash, Aaron? He's still taking all those cow things to the ranch. Yes, you have. Uh, so your cargo hold has a total of twenty nine point seven uh, d tons of space. You are holding twenty d tons of cattle. <laughs> nice. Better move it. <laughs> So I guess the question is, which is the priority? Are we getting going to take these cows, or are we going to go to feed? We're going to feed. The cows can wait. They're they're um, in suspended animation. Okay. So. Um, Where are we stopping at Ogma? Yeah, I mean, it's up to you if you want to make an extra, you know, five. 500k, uh, possibly more, you could stop at Ogma. I'm down there if everybody else is. Unless it's been horribly out of control, it seems like a pretty easy job. Anyone else have an opinion? I'll oppose. <laughs> okay, I hope you feel better, Carl. Aww. Yeah, his, his back is <laughs> bad, yeah. Um, well, in that case, I was going to say we should leave it up to Baron, since, like, the the looking for the girl is their mission, and they patiently let us go through some things. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys could... Like, today's a good day for detour. Yeah, you guys could, if you wanted to, you could leave the cattle on your station at Borite and Ooh. and come back for them and then continue on after you go and make your um, your inquiries at Thieve. Now, the last time you were at Thieve, uh, there was a deal with Admiral DeRokin. So Thieve is run by a um, a group called the Lords of Thieve. Who are all high, you know, high mucky muck uh, pirate captains, <clears throat> or in this case, admirals. And the deal was that if you, uh, Admiral Drogan wanted you to kill uh, Ferric Redthane, and um, but he he didn't want that. He didn't want that constantly being put back in his face, and so. Uh, the deal that you had made with him that you wouldn't return to Thieve for a year. Well, it's been a year. So you are more than welcome to go back to Thieve at this point. Um, you haven't been there in a while. And uh, there there are multiple opportunities there. You could go to Thieve and have the Harrier upgraded um, if you so wanted to. Ooh. Hey, pretty funny. Pretty funny. But I mean, it's not like you're short on cash. I, if I have some some recommendations, <laughs> if you would like. Okay, so let's land with the chief and uh, negotiate. So. Okay, so um, so you get to the or you get to Ogma, um, and <clears throat> this Ogma is a very cold planet. Um, and the landing pad outside of this, so when you, when you set down at these coordinates, you find a landing pad that's basically just an ice shelf with some, some, uh, docking beacons put there. There is a small refueling station, um, that they're more than willing to, uh, 
to supply you with. But as you're coming in, you are radioed <clears throat> by numerous captains, or, or rather numerous chieftains on Ogma, all wanting to know, um, you know, what your purpose here is. Um, so who's going to be running sensors? I think I have that sensor. Okay. Go ahead and make a sensors plus intellect or, e or education check. Um, let's twelve. Nice. So, uh, you are able to detect that there are at least three vessels that have launched. Um, they are coming in on an intercept course. Um, ETA twenty five minutes. It seems that they were launched from the opposite side of the planet, so they have to come around. Um, who's going to be doing communications? Anybody? Anybody? I have a minus two to social. I've got team C, maybe. Um, I, let's see, Kong, it's, I got plus one. Okay, there you go. So make an electronics. Can I, can I do comms and flying? I mean, I feel like it's push a button while I'm steering. Uh, well, it's more than that because you're getting so many calls in that it's almost like you have to, you're going to have to dial it in to figure out which guy it is on what frequency that you want to talk to. Okay. I guess I can do it. Yeah. If anybody, if anybody else is, I mean, like, I, I think I'd be better, yeah, better asset at the pilot's chair. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think so. yeah I'll, I'll do the electronic comms. Okay. Go ahead and make a comms plus your choice, either intellect or education. That is a six. Actually, a seven. Okay. You're having a tough time dialing in um, the correct chieftain. And, I mean, it's just, there's like 40 chiefs that are that are yammering, trying to get your attention. <clears throat> Basically, oh, we'll shoot you down and take your ship. Or, or another guy's like, uh, if you deal with us, we'll we'll grant you safe safe harbor. Another guy's like, you know, um, do you have any women? Another guy, does anybody on your ship know how to read? <laughs> um. So the big thing with mm -hmm. Augman, uh, there. So for instance, on Borite, um, people on Borite uh, hide the fact that they know how to write or read because raiders will take them first because there's no technicians, and so they're trying to find anybody who's literate that can at least read technical manuals to try and learn how to do this stuff. Um, so yeah, there, there, there's all sorts of shit coming in. Um, Ching Shi, make a recon plus intellect check. Okay. Eleven. Out of the corner of your eye, and of course on your your sensor panels, you detect the radiation flash of a ship emerging from jump space. Um, it is a small ship. Uh, I can tell you how small. Like, about the same size as you guys, really. One here. We can take them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I say our story is we're selling cows. <laughs> so do you still have the cows with you, or did you leave the cows on um, on your station? I don't know. Does it matter? Can we sell someone a cow and then deliver it? 
not, not have a million cows and give them older ones. That's not that. I mean, I guess that's I'm, theoretically possible. I want, wait, we're going to have at least one cow so I can pet it whenever I want. So there'll be at least one, like, sample cow. Like, here's the quality of cow you can have. <laughs> Or hopefully that cow likes space travel. <laughs> right. Do we have, well, they're they're do we have in they're boots. They're cryo <laughs> they're in cryostasis, so you know. She, she said she's got she said she's got one awake, so that she can like edit. There it so is. there's there's one awake cow. Did I put it in cryo over and over again? Oh, yeah. Cool. That's right. You had one cow that you decided to to uh, leave awake so that you could go down and pet it. You're not supposed to uh, refreeze thawed meat. That's true. Yes. Okay. All right. But we do have one sample cow, and that really <clears> seems <throat> inexplicable to anybody else. We just have a fucking cow on board. So it's a pretty good story. That's cool. We'll we'll listen check. How the little story checked out. We will check um, and do it for anybody we don't like the look of. That's fertilizer. That's valuable merchandise. Fling cow patties out the window at any enemy. So, Chin Shi, this ship is what you see on your sensors. Um, it is a 200 ton yacht uh, that is named Starlight Voyager. I mean, being a yacht, uh, you know, that could be worth some cash. Or they probably have some cash. Uh, and it is heading for the gas giant. Okay. So you could, if you wanted to, it looks it's going to head for the gas giant in order to refuel. You could, you guys could potentially pirate it. Um, and then land on Ogma, or you could just ignore it. Do we want to, um, do you want me to, like, echo, offer to help pilot them in to fuel their ship? Let's offer them some cows. <laughs> and, and say we get some cows while we're at it. Because <laughs> I'm, I have renown as a pilot, like... I, I'm, I'm plus three for piloting, so I'm supposed to be the best in the biz. So then I can say I will help them get in safe, like, refill safely. All they have to do is listen to our business pitch about the cows, and we'll help them pilot for free. It's like those people that try and clean your fucking carpet, and then they're yeah, like, we'll, the we'll sell you a cow, and then you can share this opportunity with your friends, and they can sell a cow. <laughs> 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 but I digress. So, do we want to do we want to try and get the yacht's attention, or do we want to just let them go? Well, uh, let's vote. Do you guys? I vote pirate. You vote. You guys vote pirate. I vote let them go. Okay. If we if we take it out. Do we have, we do have someone who could fly it. We do have someone who, to, like, making sure. We've got someone who can fly it. We've got someone who can defend it. I used my um, my experience last time to put it, put points to pilot. Cool. Yeah. I just choose between that and leadership, and I, yeah, I went with pilot, because of the yeah. that shit. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, if you're going to have a fleet, you've got to have more than one pilot. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Okay. So it sounds like we're going to take them. Now we just got to figure out how. Sail pitch. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Okay, Halo. Let's do it. Okay. We need the cow up here. So who, who is going to message Starlight Voyager? I don't text and drive, so it's going to be Keith. Yeah, it'll be me. Okay. And what are you telling them? We have an amazing business opportunity. 
Yeah, that's what I'm telling them. We have an amazing business opportunity. <laughs> we have a world-renowned pilot willing to help you. <laughs> I'll do it, I guess. You can like hook it up and I'll do yeah. it. Yeah, all right. Um, we have a world-renowned pilot willing to help you um, refuel the gas giant if you'll listen to our um, opportunity. <laughs> Like, it's like getting a free vacation. Yeah, a free vacation as long as you listen to the three hours feel about the timeshare. They just can rob you at gunpoint when you show up. Uh, <laughs> More evil than advertised. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just remembering your all the people that went to the time chair presentation last time we went on vacation. If they came back, like, yeah, we got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened? Things were going so well, and then I got punched in the face. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty nuts. I like to plan them. I hope they're interested, I hope they're gullible. They're on a yacht. So. I mean, I, I hope they have a shitty pilot, and that way. That's true. So their response is a double pop-up turret, and they rake you with a pulse laser, uh, doing three points of damage to your hull. Motherfuckers. Okay, it's going to be like that, huh? It's going to be like that. <laughs> Captain, I would like to blow them up now, please. It's because they're, they're vegan. You, you talked about the cow that's oh, vegan. Shit. It's, it's, they could be like those space vegans, you're right. <laughs> those evil space vegans. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because there is actually an alien race called the vegans in Traveler. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, they can't think of the assholes. Offended by our cows. Okay. Um, so, what's, their, what's their distance? Uh, their distance... They are at uh, medium range. Um, so, Ching Shi. So, at raking across and doing our, the, those three points at that medium distance, is that. Does that mean they're not trying to cause catastrophic damage? They're just trying to scare us off? Uh, well, they are at medium distance because you guys haven't really been here that long. Um, and uh, they are, they have sped up at this point and are heading for the gas giant. Hold on, just a moment. Well, I, just, I just mean, is it at, at a medium distance without causing catastrophic damage? Is it intentionally not catastrophic damage? Like, no, they, it, the, what is, is it staying the F away from us? No, it I probably didn't move there. Yeah, it was a solid hit. It was a solid hit. It's just that's all the damage it did. Because okay. you've got, it would have done seven damage, but you've got four uh, armor, so. Okay. Uh, so shall we increase price to your steward? Yeah, fuck them up. Fuck them up. Okay. Would like to make a called shot at their engines. Hold on just a second. We're going to strap Rexar to the top of the ship, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. You can just shoot them through up there. I knew I was close. So, Ching Shi, roll uh, two dice, plus your pilot skill, <clears throat> plus your ship's thrust score, which is... I believe six. Yeah. Okay. So I roll ten. My pilot is three, so that's thirteen. Do I add um, intellect? Uh, Dex? No. This is just your initiative. So. So it's thirteen plus six. Uh, Nineteen. Okay. Hold on, let me find you. Where are you at? Where are you at? That's not what I wanted to do. 
Hang on to that number for just a second. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god. This again. Okay. That's better. So for this, this is the uh, map of your ship. Of course, here is the bridge. Here is the Capri Sun. Oh boy. Maybe a little bit bigger. I don't really have anything for them, so this guy will work for now. What the hell? There we go. Okay, so what what was the initiative that you rolled, Ching Chi? Ching Chi, what did you roll? Sorry, I was muted. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. All right. Let's see what this guy gets. <laughs> he gets a nine. Okay, so obviously you're going first. Clearly. Does anybody want to do a tactics naval skill check? I've got naval plus one. Does anybody have higher than that? No. <laughs> Let's see. Is it just naval? It'd be uh, naval tactics plus uh, intellect or education. Okay. So that would be 11. So that makes your initiative 22. He doesn't have any uh, tactics. And so, Ching Shi, you're you said you wanted to speed up to try to intercept. Uh, yes. So, out of your six thrust points, how many are you spending? He's got one. He's got one thrust point. Yes. But he has accelerated. Um. For now, what do you think, Captain? Do we max or do we increase speed? We can increase and still have points left over from maneuvering, so yeah. Might as so let's well. do let's do what do you think three? That sounds good to me. Okay, yeah, you're definitely going to catch this guy. Um, all right. And then he, this will scare him shitless. <laughs> he he picked the wrong uh, Capri Sun to mess with. Yes. Okay. Um, do, do, do. All right. Uh, Rexar, you want to shoot at this this guy? Right in the engines, right on the yep. So you're gonna do a call shot for the engines. 
Go and make yep. a gunner turret plus dex Good check. Place. Oh. And you get to add plus two to that for fire control. And Nine. I assume you're yes. you're firing the particle barbette? Yeah. Okay. Nine plus three plus two. That's fourteen. Okay. Uh Wow, that is exactly six. Uh, so you hit engines with a critical. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking for my... Well, that'll do. Uh, okay. Um... Critical hits. So, roll your damage for particle beam barbette. It is roll four D plus six. Uh, six, eleven, thirteen, six. So it's nineteen. Ooh, ouch. Okay. Okay, that's smart. Uh, and you, you guys see this particle beam hit the side of this um, yacht, and you could just see melted sheets of hull coming off of this yacht. Um, and you hit the engines. Let me find engines. So were you aiming for the maneuver drive? Or the, well, the J drive is out of fuel, so... Um, Whichever one gives him thrust. So his maneuver drive... Uh, you hit him with a critical. All checks to control his craft are at DM minus one. And he's going to return fire. But he misses with a seven. Oh, wait. Fire control. So he would have a nine. So he does hit. Uh, four. Eleven. So. Seven points of hull damage to your ship as he rakes you. Um, and over the comms, uh, from his ship, you hear the captain of Starlight Voyager tell, You'll never take me, pirates! We would have let you go if all you've done was say no thank you. I know, they started it. <laughs> you'll never take you. Fuck you, asshole. And now you're gonna die. Good job. Think. You showed us. Beth, make a electronic sensors plus intellect or education. And, I got 14. And you can you can add like plus three to that, so seventeen. Um that's <laughs> that's an effect of uh nine. Um your sensors when you're looking at this ship, um what you're pulling up on sensors is that this thing is kind, this yacht's kind of a wreck. I mean, not from, not just from the damage that you inflicted. It was a piece of shit before you shot it. This, from what your sensors are showing, there's multiple systems out on it. Um, the hull has multiple scars on it. The thing just looks like a junker. What the hell have they been up to? That's pretty crazy. 
Uh, he is, uh, well, Ching Shi, you uh, have reduced the range from medium to short range. Okay. Uh, do you want to continue to try to close with him? To board, or? Uh, that is up to Captain. What do you think, Captain? It'd be more fun to board it and see if there's anything good on board or, like, get a story. But it is riskier. And it's kind of a piece of shit. I don't know. I, I'm uh, seeing red because I think they're being real jerks. Um, and they started it. They're, like, complaining, but they started it. And I know Rexar wants to smash the head. So, yeah, you know, let's try and, let's try and um, use the decree. And uh, punches drop. Yep. Ramming speed. <laughs> okay. So are you going to maintain your thrust of three or... Because um, that'll put you at close range um, next turn. And the turn after that, you will be in contact. Yeah, because I'd still like to... I mean, I don't really know how maneuver points work as far as, like, could I have maneuvered out of the seven points of damage... Um, you could have, yeah, you could have, if you wanted to, you could have uh, done like an evasive maneuver because you've got um, basically, so you're using three, you have three uh, more maneuver points, you could do evasive maneuvers, if you were successful on your piloting check, that would have given him a minus three to his roll, okay. but I mean, it's, I mean, honestly, he's not doing that much damage, he... He got lucky that last shot. Okay, um, but I think if I think at our our current heading, if we'll be able to get him in a round, that's good enough for me. Um, just so that next time I'll take evasive maneuvers properly. Okay, so you are uh, actually. I'm sorry. Your next turn will bring you to close range, so that'll bring you to within ten kilometers of him. Which in space, that's that's really close. Okay. Like your 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 um, proximity alarms start to go off at like ten thousand kilometers, so yeah. yeah, at ten kilometers he's going to be shitting his pants, and then the following turn that'll bring you in contact with him. Um, oh. So he, okay. you know, he fires again. I definitely want to take a base of the doors. I would like to take a shot at this turret. Can I get a chance? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and take a shot. He's going to use his one maneuver point, and he's, gonna, he's at minus one. He's going to try to... He gets exactly eight. So you are at minus one, uh, so that's only a plus one from your fire control. All right, so that puts me at plus six to Ten. Ten to hit. Okay, so so that's not a critical, um, but it is four D plus two damage. Oh, that's a really good hit. Uh, six twelve. Another twelve. No, I'm still adding that. Okay, I'm two sixes of the four. Oh. Uh, thirteen. Plus two, right? Yep. So 18 points of damage. Ouch. Man. Okay. Attaboy. So rather than fire back at you, um, Starlight Voyager um, cuts their engines, and over the radio, uh, the captain of Starlight Voyager messages you and surrenders. And he says, his name is um, Captain Kars uh, Vassirin. And Captain Vassirin, uh, he tells you, he's like, oh, sorry about all of that. Um, um, you're welcome to dock. So I say we dock, fortunately. Um, yes, although I think that we should be careful because I'm pretty sure we've used this as a, as a lure them into a false sense of security technique ourselves. Full speed, right So you, you wanna you still wanna ram him anyways? Yeah. 
that's what Rex are saying, but uh, he has no authority. <laughs> no, I I think I'm just I'm just thinking yes, let's let's dock, um, but everybody get your biggest gun and make sure yeah. your rack suited up because um, this is the exact thing we've done to trick people. <laughs> Like, yeah. Oh no. Oh, that's the other thing. On Thieve, Ching Shi can get the uh, grav belt on her new uh, battle dress fixed. Yeah. <laughs> Go full Iron Man. I do. I, I, will, I will do it. I need to wait for a second. Okay. So, uh, so Ching Shi brings the ship up and docks with Starlight Voyager. Before I step away, do you want me to roll for that or no? Yeah, go ahead and make a piloting plus dex check. Okay. And it's just routine. That's going to be uh, eight. Ooh, that was very good. Well, you only needed a six, so you docked perfectly. Um, yeah, it's just, eight, eight's not very good when your piloting plus dex is plus five. So it's not agreeable. <laughs> yeah. So I assume that the, that you've got three people in battle dress going in. Is that right? Um, and uh, and then of course Keith in combat armor. And uh, you guys are. How are you geared up? What kind of weapons are you packing? I've got my laser rifle. Only my axe. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Nova gun. Okay, so you you open your airlock, and when the the airlock to Starlight Voyager opens, and let me I will show you the layout of this ship. Just as soon as I find it. Here it is. So, okay. Actually, you're probably not going to be in the front. <laughs> Too many names that start with C. And I'm sure uh, Rexar is going to be charging in. Oh, yes. yes. And I'm going to make baking transformer noises with my mouth as I'm running around in my brand new battle dress. A lot of goo, goo. <laughs> you're going to hear a lot of that. You're going to hear a lot of like, pew, 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 because I'm, I'm very excited to be in Battle Trust. It's going to be very uncool. There he is. So Captain Viserion uh, meets you guys at the airlock. Rexar, you come charging in um, with your uh, your axe drawn, ready for battle. Um, the captain is not 
he, his gun is still in a holster, and he's got his hands up. And he, he, he says, wait, wait, wait. Before you go on a murderous rampage, hear me out. Now, the other thing, you see that there is uh, some kind of Marine-type guy up here, and there is some kind of Marine-type guy at the end of the hall behind the Saren. Both of them have, uh, have shotguns, um, but they are not pointing them at you. They have them pointed at the deck. And Captain Viserin tells you, he says, um, um, you got us fair and square. Um, I, I admit it was my fault for shooting back at you. I didn't answer your comms. So take whatever you want. Pirate us if you want. Um, we've got uh, one passenger has been killed, so you can loot his room and anything on him for all you want. Um but honestly, the only reason I fired back at you is because if you look around, this ship is not in the best of condition. And I figure if I could turn in an insurance claim that, you know, maybe I'd get her back to flying condition again or maybe get even something better than this rusty bucket. How much would that, how much would the insurance have to pay out to to give you uh to repair it. Like how much are you aiming to make with your squad? Uh his insurance claim would pay him probably in the range. Uh he's probably gonna make twenty mega credits off of this. Nice. What happened to it to make it this way in the first place? Well, he says, uh, simply can't afford to keep her flying. Um, you know, um, he says, honestly, I've been looking for a way out. Uh, the ship, I can't, I can't, I haven't been able to meet the, the, uh, maintenance costs as you can see. And you guys are looking around the ship. There's like wires hanging out. There's, there's insulation hanging out of the walls, um, doesn't look like anything's really been cleaned much. Um, the paint is horrific. Um, you've seen the insides of like garbage containers that look better than the inside of the ship. Um, and he says, you know, I, I, I just, I'm having a hard time of it. I haven't been able to, to make my bills and I certainly can't meet the, the uh, uh, maintenance costs and I can't even pay the mortgage on the damn thing. Would you like us to blow up your ship and split the payment? <laughs> Make a uh, persuasion plus charm check. Uh, we have plenty of room. We're down 11. You can hang out with some cows. So he says, uh, he says, he, he kind of puts his hands down and he goes, you, you would do that for me? He says, if it was a complete loss of the ship, I mean, I'm looking at a payout of, of 60 mega credits. Because that would be better than I would make just off the insurance claim as it, as it stands. Of course I'd be okay with that. Uh, he says, of course, you know, I do have a, um, a noble that is a passenger. Um, I had two, two high passengers. One of them was killed. In the attack, or in the battle. So do we have to um, pay out from the, uh, do we have to give his family money from the payout? That's the deal? Yeah. Hey. I'm going to apologize for the loss of human life right now. <laughs> well, he, he says, he, well, he, what, is, what his point is that, that he, has, he has people on this ship that they're going to need passage somewhere. And well, Ogma's really the not. Yeah. Yeah. Ogma's really not a, a place that he he wants to set down. But he's not he's not complaining. He you know uh, if you wanted to leave them at the uh, Jadeco spaceport on Ogma, um, he he's sure that he can find a way off from there. Have you thought about? Um... 
a career in the fantastic world of pirating. Go ahead, make a uh, make a persuasion plus charm check. Okay. I have questions about how the passenger died. Like, so we damaged the hull, but how did that kill a passenger? Eh, rocking the boat. Bad, I mean, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, rocking the boat. Um, he was in in a mess hall. And uh, he, you know, he's got a medic looking in on him right now, but the guy's going to die. He didn't have his tray in the upright and locked position? Correct. That's so what he gets. And he forgot to put his mobile comm in airplane mode. Yeah, that's, that's what did it right there. That's what that's actually did it, yeah. Um, I rolled two sixes on my persuade, so I got 13 altogether. Okay. Um, he says, <clears throat> he says, that may be an even better, uh, option. So he says, uh, you know, that nobleman, uh, would be a pretty good, um, uh, ransom if you wanted to do that. Um, or you could sell him to the Ogman Raiders. I'm sure that they would be willing to buy him. When he says that, this guy and this guy... Raise their shotguns. And I'll yell duck. <laughs> okay. My hand going to barter. Time to, time to do some shooting. Okay. <laughs> Tennessee? So, so these guys are open or pre <coughs> preparing to fire despite their captain's. So. Uh, so these guys aren't actually uh, members of the crew. They are this nobleman's bodyguards. Okay, uh, that's the part of it. Got it. So these guys get a zero. Everybody roll initiative. <laughs> I'm going to switch this back over to light mode because I cannot see what I'm doing. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Okay. There you go, Keith. Wow. Okay. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> Get it. I can't do anything. I'm in the back. <laughs> well, you can move. Um, I'll step out of your way for that. Damn. <laughs> so yeah, you can move eight, You can move six meters and fire. So six meters. Well shit. You could be right here and fire down the hall. That is perfect. That is what I will do. Okay. All right. Go ahead and make your shot. Right, That is uh, 12. <laughs> yeah. So that's a TL-9 laser rifle, right? Or is it an 11? It's a TL-11. Oh, my God. So <laughs> that's 5D plus 6 damage. This yeah. guy's going to eat a lot of shit. <laughs> Sorry. Um... These two bodyguards are wearing uh, TL-10 combat armor. That's 27. Yeah. Holy shit. Staying there? Yep. <laughs> and they're just a shadow. Yeah, even with TL-10 combat armor. Holy crap. Okay, so that means his endurance is non existent and his strength is down to two. That hurt him a lot, uh, but he's still standing. 
Uh, Captain Beth, what would you like to do? I'd like to remedy the situation with that guy still standing. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll see if the Nova got in there. Um, I got 10. Okay, and the so that's plus two to damage. I'm gonna murder this guy. All right, so it's 40 plus three, so I'm again. Yeah, he's like mega dead. Um, no, 13, 15, 15. So his combat armor stops 13. Damn it. But that's another two. Uh, he's going to take that off of his dex. Shit. He's so he now has three damaged... Um, <laughs> three damaged stats. He is probably going to be in need of surgery. Uh, and so you only moved like... Two meters. You want to move another four, or do you want to stay where you're at? I'm going to step in front of Keith just because my armor is way better than his. Okay. You can do that. Ching Shi, <laughs> what would you like to do? <clears throat> okay. Um, so I know I can move six and fire. If rather than fire, I want to move and aim, how far can I go? So you could move six. Uh, let's see here. I know, I know it's six and fire, but if I wanted to just move. Oh, you move 18. 18. Okay. So then I'm going to attempt to pick up my game piece. I'm going to move right here. Okay. And be ready to aim or aim down the hall. Okay. So All right. I moved 12. Can I move 12 and then aim? Yes. Okay, that's so you could aim around this corner uh, yes. at this guy, which will give you a plus one on your next turn. Sweet. Uh, actually. Let me give him a zero as well. Okay. Uh, Rexar, what would you like to do? Uh, the guy right in front of me with the pistol is the captain, right? Correct. Yeah, this is the captain of the Starlight Voyager. Captain Viserin. Does he want to fight? Uh... Uh, he's reaching for his pistol, but he's. it looks like he's twisting and is going to shoot the guy behind him. He's armed with a laser pistol. Walk past him to the guy in the hallway, dragging my axe the entire time on the ground. Okay. Yeah, you can get right to the guy. And I'm going to stand right in front of him and say, listen, I'm an Aslan in battle dress. I'll give you one shot. After that, I'm going to rip you in half. Do you want to do this? <laughs> uh, hmm. Make a melee blade plus your social. And I'm going to give you an additional plus two because you are an Aslan in battle dress. Uh, does that include my strength with melee blade? No, just so is it replacing the strength with social? Correct. Okay, so that is a ten. He is intimidated. Um, he will be at a minus two on his attack on you, but he is not going to back down. So that was your movement and another minor action. You would have another minor action to do whatever you would like. I'm not going to attack until he shoot, takes a shot at me, so I'm just going to 
cross arms and wait. Okay. Uh, bodyguard up here. Ducks around this corner and takes a shot at Beth. Well, he's really taking a shot at Keith, but Beth's in the way, and so she's going to... She's probably going to take it unless he gets a really good shot. That uh, will be to Beth. So you your battle dress has is uh twenty two protection, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so he doesn't even get through your battle dress. Um it just bounces right off your armor. Um this guy is going to pull the trigger at point blank range on Rexar. And that is a plus four. <laughs> Rexar, you take one point of damage. The shotgun actually does get through your armor. I'm going to use my reaction to try my shield. Okay. All right, so you will be at a minus one on your next turn. The captain uh, kind of ducks up here and fires his laser pistol around Rexar at the bodyguard. Whew. And gets a 13. <laughs> or a plus five to damage. Yeah, that's a shitty roll. Ten points doesn't get through his combat armor. Okay. We are back to Keith. What would you like to do? This guy has some cover, uh, granting him um, a plus six bonus to his armor. So right now he's at 19 protection because of his his cover. Okay. Um I think I will move just next or just behind Beth and shoot around her. Okay. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. That is a 14 to hit. That is a hit with plus six damage. He will take at least one point, no matter what. Okay, so that's uh, 22. Jesus. So that is nine points. Oh boy. Wow. So no matter what he does, he is unconscious. Oops. <laughs> With one point of strength left over. Mm -hmm. He goes down. Uh, you still have minor action. You could move to wherever you wanted to go. Um, I think I'll move towards the unconscious man. Uh, 
six meters. Okay. Let's see here. Six. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Captain Smith, what would you like to do? Mm. So I think I'll get on this side of our friend. Okay. In order to in order to cover him. Okay. Because I mean I don't really I don't know if anybody's gonna come from any other direction. Okay. And yeah, that's true. People, so. Yeah, you don't know what's behind these doors, so yeah. Okay, so you have two more minor actions. Um, if you're not going to take a a, a um a significant action, you have two more minor actions. Uh, you could use to like aim if you wanted to, because you're not going to be able to fire the Nova gun again until next round. Okay, um, I could aim, and I also I'm going to ask him how many more how many more bodyguards there are. Uh, he tells you he says these are the only two, and he says my crew is not going to not going to engage. I've already ordered my crew before you even boarded the ship to stand down. Cool. Okay. Good info. All right. Ching Shi, what would you like to do? You have a plus one from aiming down this hallway. Yeah, I'm going to step into the hallway and fire. Okay. So, gun combat plus dex plus one. Actually, plus two because you have a scope. You're using your advanced combat rifle, right? I am. Okay. So, yeah, that's plus two. So it's, yeah, with the scope. Okay. Um, unless, well, you you get the plus one for the scope unless you're doing auto fire. So if you have, if um, you're going to do burst or full auto, then you don't gain the, the bonus from the scope. No, I think it's, I think we will go one and done. Okay. So that's, let's see, eight, ten, seven. Thirteen. Okay. So that is a plus five to your damage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, six, twelve, seventeen. Oof. Man. Uh... Speaking of Linda. Hmm. I'm just kidding. Can we throw the marines of meat when we get down on the planet? <laughs> if you won't, if you won't buy cows, we have long pork too. What is it called on Fallout? Mystery. Strange meat. It was strange meat, Mister. You know some strange meat. People on this planet don't give a fuck. To eat people. Oh, oh wait. I think that's. Wait, 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 wait. Undo that. Fallout three, right? It's the wandering vendor. I got something for you. Try this again. Uh, so. So he takes four. Okay. So he takes four points of damage through his armor. Uh, right, and we're just going to step back behind the, cur the corner again. Okay. So you back. can do that. Step back. And I'm done. Okay. Rexar. Hmm. What would you like to do? <laughs> I'm going to off my shield and uh, look at him dead the end and say, and now the galaxy will just remember you as the fool who didn't take his chance to live and cut him in half. Make your attack. Uh-oh. So with the roll alone, it's 11. Plus three strength from battle dress. So that's 14. <laughs> okay. And then plus three from melee. Minus one. So that's 16. 
So he takes another four. <clears throat> oh, no, that was the hit. Oh, okay. Uh, so... So let's see here. So what was the total? 17? 16. 16. That's so that's a, from my that is a plus 8 to damage. My axe also has 86. Okay, so it'll ignore 6 points of his armor. Well, plus 8, you said? Yep. 20 points of damage. Oof. So he's going to eat 13. Let's see here. He's still up. He is hurting badly. Anything with your minor action? Rexar? Uh, I'm gonna look at it bleeding out and be like, uh, no, my captain's a doctor if you want to drop the shotgun. <laughs> he... Uh, runs that way, Rexar. Um, as a reaction, you get to make a um. You get to make an axe an axe swing if you want to burn a reaction on it. Uh, hell yes. Okay. So since we forgot about the minus one on your main attack, you'll be at minus one for this attack. I did include the minus one. Oh, did so you? I at, uh, that's why I said I was at seventeen, and then I went to sixteen. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you get it. You get uh, blade plus uh, your choice, dex or strength. Uh, fourteen. Okay. Plus six to damage, that means he'll take at least one point no matter what. Oh, I rolled that. Uh, six, seven, so that's 13 damage, and six of it is AP. Oh, three twos and a one. Hmm. And as he's running away, I'll call him like, wait, no, the cops is the other way. Oh, well, well work. <laughs> so he's still up, and he is going to fire his shotgun. At Ching Shi. Ching Shi has a plus six to her armor at this point uh, because of her cover. And he's at a minus two because he's so fucked up. <clears throat> now, his, his shotgun blast blows a, a chunk of uh, wall out um, close to Ching Shi, but not close enough. Uh, Captain Viserne is going to run here and shoot his laser pistol. Are you going to shoot him in the back? Yep. Because that's how pirates do it, right? <laughs> He's going to fit right in. He gets... I'm going to say, maybe it's the constituents, but I'm on board. He gets plus four to his damage. Four, 
for a total of 15 after armor. That means this guy takes another two points of damage and falls unconscious. With a laser burn in his back. And that's that's exactly what the captain says. He 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 shoots the guy in the back and he turns to uh Captain Beth and Rexar and he says, That's uh that's how pirates do it, right? Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. He says, um he says, uh <clears throat> so however you want to uh deal with the noblemen, if you want to uh, uh, we, he can stay here or not. We are carrying four tons of luxury goods and four tons of freight. Um, the cargo... Um, well, let's see here. I shall consult the trade table. Passengers, freight. I guess I want to know if the nobleman's cool or like awful. <laughs> if the captain knows. So oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> the four tons of freight are actually live animals. That's more cattle. God, really? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the, the luxury <laughs> goods. Look at the nearest generic. The the recommended patties of meat. Just sell it to the burger factory. Right. The luxury goods are things like. Uh, they were things, four tons of luxury goods, things that the nobles had brought on, uh, things like fine clothes, um, liquors, uh, that kind of thing. Um, he says, if you want, uh, I, I don't know what your, I would assume that you guys have someplace you would want me to take uh, the ship. Um, I don't, I don't know. What you want me to do? If you want, then we can keep the noble on board, and we can ransom him where you know to wherever we get. That's entirely up to you. How do you want to handle this? He says my engineer. He says my engineer can probably get our maneuver drive back up and running, and we can limp our way to wherever you want to go, and then we can work on further repairs at that point. Wait, are we going to settle it? Guys, I thought we were going to do insurance money. Did, did, money. Well, did you... So, do you, you want to just pull him and his crew onto uh, the Capri Sun? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, him and his crew, whatever cargo we can store, leave the bodies on the ship and spend it. So, let's see. You've got your choice. So, right now you have 20 tons of Awua cattle. Uh, leaving another nine tons. So you could take all of the luxury goods and the freight and you could bring his crew on board. It's going to be some tight fitting um, on the Capri Sun. Um, and you could probably find a room to lock the nobleman up in. And he, So the medic goes and brings out this nobleman up here who had the luxury suite. And this guy's, oh, I, I swear, I have friends in the in the Imperial Navy. They'll be after you, that's for darn sure. Okay. I'm a duke. We're selling your bodyguards for me. Nobody asked. So you say you're, you're going to sell his bodyguards for me. And he says, <laughs> wait, wait, uh. What system did you say we were in? And Captain Viserion says, we're in Ogma. Maybe we should leave him down on the planet. Yeah, maybe. Or you could calm down and come with us. Either way, 
Yeah, rather than rather than ransoming him, he could tell him we'll put him down on the surface and he can pay us to stay. Um <laughs> <laughs> Who who wants to make the persuasion plus uh charm check on that? And you get an additional plus two because of where you're at. I got one persuade, no charm. What about you, Kinky? I have one. I have plus one persuade, plus one charm. Okay, you're going to do one point better than me then. Go ahead. Yeah, unless I blow the rule. Oh, but I didn't because I got 10. Uh, so 12. He says, no, 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 don't, don't, don't take me down there. Uh, I, I will. Well, I mean, if, if you don't want to be here, that's that's totally fine. Uh, yeah, we're happy to meet your needs. I'm perfectly happy with any any kind of room aboard your vessel. I, I'm I'm perfectly okay with that. Yeah, we probably, we probably have a bunk somewhere for you. Well, oh, then 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 please uh, feel free to lock the door. I'm I'm fine. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> I appreciate your can-do attitude, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> On the on the nobleman, um, he has in cash on him uh, forty thousand credits. Well, that that's actually between him and the the dead nobleman. Um, there was forty thousand credits. The the luxury uh, four tons of luxury trade goods. Here. Tell you exactly how much this is worth. I mean, it's four tons of booze and fine clothing. I don't know. Maybe you want to just keep it. Um, Tempting. Oh. Right. Okay. So the four tons of luxury goods is worth another forty thousand. Or I'm sorry, the four tons of live animal is worth another forty thousand credits. The luxury goods oh. Wow. Uh, the luxury goods, these are fine wines and aged liquors and clo and fine clothes. Uh, could fetch a price as much as eight mega credits. Ooh. You'd probably only be able to sell them on a high population world, though. They bought them on Thieve, right? You might be able to fence them on Thieve, yeah. What's our plan on going? Probably. I mean, we got to go there anyway. That's where we're going next. Yeah. Yep. So next, we will land on Ogma, and uh, we will pick this up next week with your negotiations with the chief down on Ogma. Um, actually, Keith Clark, make another electronics comms. Uh, plus intellect or education check. Okay. And nine. Okay. So Keith is able, to, once you guys get back on the ship, <clears throat> Keith goes to the bridge and is actually able to isolate the frequency for this uh, clan chief. And the clan chief uh, tells you, oh, good, I, I'm glad that, uh, I'm happy to hear from you. And he gives you docking clearance at his personal, uh, landing pad outside of his longhouse. And that's where we'll pick up next week. Dude, awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. Thanks for playing, guys. I will see you guys next week at seven o'clock. Awesome. Take care. Have a good night, guys.